Richard Dawkins is a prolific writer. He wrote The Selfish Gene a long time ago, and then he wrote the Re Unweaving the Rainbow, and then A Brief Candle in the Dark, and The Greatest Show on Earth, and The God Delusion. Matter of fact, I have another one in the, I just bought it too. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you about Richard Dawkins' The Ancestor's Tale. And, uh, well, there's a picture of Richard right there. That's what he looks like. In this book, we've talked about it a little bit in the lecture, but let's look at this. This is a what he calls rendezvous number one with chimpanzees. So he takes us and he says, when would, did we have a common ancestor with chimpanzees? And here are the two chimpanzees, and here where they had a common ancestor about two million years ago, and down here about six million years ago, that's when this branch, us, met with the chimpanzee branch, and so that's rendezvous one at six million years ago. Then, let's see, it got some nice pictures here. And then rendezvous number two with gorillas. So here we are, go to, we meet the chimpanzees here and we meet the gorillas about seven, probably eight or nine million years ago, but that's rendez, rendezvous number two with gorillas. So rendezvous number three with orangutans. So here's our lineage and we can see there's, there's uh, with chimps, there's with gorillas, and here's with the uh, orangutans about so it's 14 million years ago. Next rendezvous with gibbons, also apes. But here they are, they, they diverged from us here and then they diverged into these different types of gibbons. I think there are 18 different species. But here where they are, number four, rendezvous number four. Rendezvous number five, old world monkeys. And here we are. Uh, Chimps, gorillas, orangutans, New World monkeys, and no, no, chimps, gorillas, orangutans, and then gibbons, and now Old World monkeys. The next one is New World monkeys, and then the next one is, oh no, rodents and rabbit kind, rendezvous number 10. So lots and lots, after something diverges from us, you can see it does all kinds of wonderful things and creates new critters here, rabbits and rats. Oh, lovely things. And now here are the Laurasia thayers. That's interesting because this is rendezvous number 11. They have it at about 85 million years. I think the modern one is about 95 million years. In any case, there are cats and dogs and bears and uh, well, the fruit bats and things like that. The whole point is there are more and more rendezvous. And each one of these dots here is dot number one, chimps and gorillas and orangutans and then gibbons and then new world, old world monkeys and new world monkeys, blah, 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 blah all the way down to 11 which are the Laurasia theres, things that evolved in Laurasia. Anyway, it's a lovely book. And if you go down, let's go down to even further. What happens even more? Here we have a rendezvous number 31 with sponges. So here's a picture of a sponge. And here are all the rendezvous that we've had. And then all the way down here is rendezvous number 31. And then we have rendezvous with fungi. See that? Rendezvous 34 with fungi. And there it is down here. And then we have a rendezvous with plants. This is about 1.6 billion years ago. And here are all the different species or different groups of plants that evolved. Uh, so here you go, Richard. Thank you for Ancestor's Tale. I've destroyed this book in reading it, but I recommend it. A Your Inner Fish, A Journey into the 3.5 Billion Year History of the Human Body by Neil Shubin. So, here's the back. I think Neil, here's Neil right there. That's what he looked like. He's from the Field Museum in Chicago. So let's have a look at this book. All right. Well, there it is, Your Inner Fish, A Journey into the 3.5 Billion Year History of the Human Body. And it's copyright 2008. So, contents, finding your inner fish, getting a grip, handy jeans, teeth everywhere, getting a head. <laughs> That's a pun, getting a head. The best laid body plans. Anyway, that looks interesting, the meaning of it all. So, here's the story. Now, Neil went, uh, his name is Neil, right? Yeah, Neil Shubin. He found this map. He went, he was trying to find, he was trying to find uh, fish with when they start, first started having legs. And he saw this map, and he knew it was about 400 million years ago, and that's where these dark areas are. And he found that there was an unexplored area in the Arctic islands. So I went up to these very far north. Here's Greenland, and here are these Ellesmere Island, I think. So I went up there, and here's what it looks like. There's a tent, and it's a barren landscape. It must be very cold up there. 
And here's a detailed, more detailed map of this fossil site. This is Ellesmere Island, Greenland, and it's up here in Canada, in Nunavut, it's called. Anyway, this is what he found. Have a look at this. Here's what it, Tiktaalik, and here you can see it coming out of the dirt here, just slowly, and here they are digging away so carefully. And I guess the point is, is in this diagram, here's a fish, here's a new fossil, the Tiktaalik fossil, and here's a tetrapod. And you can see that there's no neck in the fish, and there starts to be a neck in the new fossil, and there's apparently a neck in the tetrapod. And you can see the shape of the head here, and here, and here. So, oh, and here's another example of the same thing. We see a fish going to a human being and a dog, and you can see the transformation of the front limb there. What else? Oh yeah, here's something we showed in the, in the, in the lecture. We have a humerus and an ulna and a radius, one, two, and then a, a dinosaur, a seal, a bird, a lizard, a pterosaur, a penguin, a bat, a humpback whale, pretty much the same thing in all these critters because they had a common ancestor. Oh, here's a diagram that's interesting because I'm not quite sure it's right. And I, matter of fact, I'm sure it's wrong for some, well, here, here's skin. And then it has these arrows, four arrows coming off of skin. One arrow says hair developed, feathers developed, breasts developed in mammals, and then teeth developed. And what I, what I think is wrong is that, or misleading, is that I think these things develop from skin and placodes in skin, but there's an order to which they, some of them are more closely connected to others. They weren't just, oop, hey, let's decide to be hair, let's decide to be feathers. They evolved slowly and uh, more like a phylogenetic tree that has divergences rather than, this is a tetravergence. Anyway, what about the, oh, here's come, look at this. Here we have a theoretical head made out of bones. They're made out of plates, and they're made out of blocks, and they're made out of rods. And then here's our head, and here are the plates here on the top, and here are the blocks, and these part of the bones of the human are blocks, and then apparently the rods are made, made or evolved into these pieces. So they say that, Plates, blocks, and rods, the theme for skulls. Every bone in our head can be traced to one of these, it says. Okay. Now, what else? Oh, yeah. Now, this is called the inner fish. But here he has a chapter called an inner sea anemone. Okay. Well, let's see. Oh, yeah. Here's a human. And here's a sea anemone. And this is a comparison of the genes in the front end, and central, and the back end, and apparently there's some homologous genes that can be traced back to sea anemones. That's lovely, we're sea anemone. Now, what is this? Oh, up here is a blow up of a human ear, and there are three bones, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And what's trying to be shown here is, here we have a bone in dark here from a reptile, that kind of evolves into this, and then, it kind of evolves into an ancient mammal here, and then apparently that bone evolves into tiny bones which are now in our ear. Two out of the three, but the stapes apparently has a different path. It comes from a shark to a fish to an early amphibium here. So one bone came from the back of the jaw, and this, I guess, the upper jaw, and this is, this is the upper jaw, and this is the lower jaw. So the wonderful origin of the three bones that allow you to hear this video. Lovely book. Thank you, Neil Schubert, for such a lovely book. Your inner fish. Have a look at it. The Rise of Fishes, 500 Million Years of Evolution. This is by John Long. Here's a picture of John. Oh, in the back. Look at this. And here's a picture of John Long, who we interviewed and uh, was one of our experts. So let's look. Oh, it's very well illustrated. Look at that thing. <laughs> Weird thing there. Looks like a submarine. Anyway, the rise of fishes, the 500 million years of evolution. Okay, swimming worms, jawless wonders, armored fish, sharks and their cartilaginous kin, spiny-jawed fishes, the epiphany of evolution. That's the primitive ray fin fishes. Okay, let's have a look. What else they got in here? Oh, look at that. There's a coelacanth. Latimeria, the living coelacanth, the most basal member of the extant lobe fin fishes. All right, that's pretty good. I didn't know they were that big. Look at that. They're about the size of a human being almost. Okay, oh, here's something interesting. Look at these. These are 395 million year trackways. So just, what, 5 million years after, 400 million years ago. And we have 
tetrapods. Maybe these are the earliest tetrapod trackways. Woo, 395 million years ago from Poland. Oh, and here's the lovely diagram that I showed in the lecture. Look at this, Gogonaceous, the Devonian tetrapodomorph fish. Well, John, we'll let you speak for yourself. There you are, we'll talk to you later on in the interview. John Long, here's the book, The Rise of Fishes, John Long, second edition.